Hey my friends, welcome back to Attract Passion and welcome to a fresh new month of February. This is a month of purification. February was named for the Roman god Februus, the god of purification. January and February were the last two months to be added to the Roman calendar since the Romans originally considered winter as a monthless period. Which means that uh, March was the beginning of the year and before the beginning of a new seasonal year, we need to purify, right? That's why it's all about cleansing right now. In nature, uh, we may find February as a month of uh, rest and preparation for the next uh, season. And during this time, we may experience a lot of stored emotions coming up to the surface, a lot of stored limited beliefs that are c still controlling our behaviors. And many of that uh, stored stuck energy may come to the surface. So this is the point where many people feel stuck. Many people feel like nothing is changing in their lives. Many people feel like they want to seek something bigger because their lives are kind of boring. But every time we are seeking something, we are running away from who we are right now. And we need to recognize that it's nothing wrong with seeking. We are all seeking something. But we firstly need to recognize from where we are seeking something. Who is the one that is seeking something and what is blocking you? that you are not experiencing already what you are seeking for. Because that's a great realization, finding what's between you and what you're seeking for. And the month of February is helping you to recognize what is standing between you right now and the thing you're seeking for. Many people are seeking a spiritual evolution. But a spiritual evolution happens after we accept all of our darkness, after we deal with everything that's kind of holding us back, right? We discover and recognize and identify our fears. We identify our limited beliefs. We identify stories we're telling to ourselves that um, are creating that self-image we have our, about ourselves that's uh, producing the level of self-confidence we have and that's kind of generating a certain degree of motivation we have. And with so much blocks and um, limiting stories and beliefs, it's hard to, be, to look on life creatively through a creative lens and we are creative by nature. So the question is, what is poisoning that lens so we can't look on life creatively? Because what it means to look on life through a creative lens. It means that you see everything as an inspiration to make something beautiful out of it. You see wars are happening, you see chaos is happening, and you see it as an inspiration to bring your unique self out to the world and make it a brighter place. Add some your, of your contrast, some of your colors, some of your beautiful expression to it. But you can only do it once you tap into that creative self, right? So again, the question is, what stands between your true self and who you think that you are, right? What stands between your true self and who you think that you are? And you may find many stories. You may find many emotional wounds, products of your past. And February is a beautiful month to dig a bit deeper into that aspect of us and recognize what stands there, right? What is there? Because nothing is more beautiful than self-acceptance. Nothing is more beautiful than getting deeper into knowing yourself better. Because that's where you discover all the levels of confidence, right? And maybe you may recognize that um, you feel discomfortable about many things. And the trick with the confidence is that it can only be built 
if you're willing to be without it at the first place, right? Confidence can only grow if you're willing to be without it, which means when you start doing something new, you're obviously without any confidence at doing that. Maybe you believe that it will work. Maybe you have a great vision that it will work, but you, ha- you don't have actual confidence. You may have confidence as a byproduct of your belief system, but the real confidence comes from personal physical experiences, right? So it may only grow as we do something we're not confident about right? Doing shadow work, we may not be so confident about it. Exposing ourselves uh, externally, like expressing our truth, expressing what we stand for, uh, we may feel unconfident about it. But we can only develop confidence around those aspects of us if we are willing to do it, if we are willing to practice it, if we are willing to become better at it, right? And more we do it, more we discover how little we know about ourselves. So my friends, it's time to know yourself better. And it's time to know the meaning of those words, what it truly means to know myself, right? An ancient saying, know thyself. Buddha said, know thyself. And what he meant by saying know thyself? He meant, if you want to know everything about yourself, you firstly need to forget everything about yourself. And once you will forget everything about yourself, you will be enlightened by the universe. And once you will be enlightened by the universe, you will have access to the universal wisdom. So it doesn't mean that you should just forget everything you've heard because it's impossible, right? Just let go of that. But um, it means that you identify false stories about yourself, false identifications about yourself, what you've been told by your environment that you are, and question the stories, question those beliefs. You may find many emotional ones. You may think about your past and you may get angry or frustrated or scared or some tension may arise some emotional tension, those are emotional wounds. And in order to heal those emotional wounds, you need to treat them as physical wounds. When you get cut, you don't just uh, pretend like nothing happened, right? You take care of the wound, you pay attention to it, you nurture it, you find the best possible treatment for it, right? And same is with emotional wounds. You need to find the best possible treatment for them. You can't ignore them. If you're ignoring them, you're ignoring yourself. When you're ignoring your emotions, you're ignoring yourself. And emotions are nothing else but signals that arrive from your body, signaling what you need to pay attention to, what you need to focus on. So start appreciating your body, start respecting your body because it is signaling to you what you need to pay attention to. Once you deal with this, um, I mean, whenever completely heal all of that, we just become more familiar with that. We become more aware of them and we start to function. Even though we went through something heavy, through something scary, we develop more awareness around it and we start reprogramming our behaviors, our automatic responses, reactions uh, out of that greater level of awareness. Which means that even if you went through some painful relationships, it doesn't mean that you don't deserve a beautiful relationship. But as long as you hold yourself to the pain, you have within your subconscious mind a belief that you are not worthy of uh, a lovable relationship. But as soon as you go a bit deeper and you recognize that maybe the person treated you the best to his or her knowledge and you were responding to that treatment, to that relationship, to the best of your knowledge, you may recognize, well, uh, I could maybe expand my knowledge a little bit about um, my communication skills, about how could, be, how could I be more honest with people. How could I be a bit more conscious when it comes to these comfortable topics in a relationship? 
how could I be less reactive and more and a better listener, right? How could I be more present? And by asking those questions, we already set powerful intentions that may produce some synchronicities in our lives that uh, may bring us to the right knowledge, to the right books, to the right information, to the right teachers, to the right therapist or coach or whoever. And suddenly you may start learning something completely new about your life. And suddenly you start forgiving to the past because you know that in front of you is much brighter future. And suddenly you know that um, your whole life you're walking the path of transformation. Sometimes you know better. Sometimes you're lacking knowledge. Sometimes you're lacking awareness. And sometimes you are more aware. But um, it's a sea of motion, right? Life is a sea of motion. Sometimes we feel a bit better, a bit higher on that scale of emotions. And sometimes we feel a bit lower. It's because everything is moving through seasons, right? Everything is moving through seasons and everything is moving in rhythms as well. Once we understand the law of rhythm, we understand that as much as we feel bad right now, as much as we feel low right now, we'll also feel high. And if we are really high right now, we also need to be aware that at some point we'll fall lower and low is not bad and high is not good. Those are just different states of life in each state. We need to learn what's the purpose of that state. What's the meaning of being in this present state I am right now. And we can only find purpose with in tuning into ourselves and asking ourselves what we need right now. What do you need right at this moment? What do you need? How often you ask yourself, what do you need right at this moment? Because you need to honor your needs. That's how you honor your body. And are those emotional needs? Of course, you need care, like self-care, and you need to take care of uh, whatever you need. But recognize what you need on that heart level. Do you need to be more honest with yourself? Do you need to be more present with yourself? What it means? Well, it means that um, you take more time and you meditate and you calm down your mind. What's the, the health level of your mind? Are your thoughts const constantly jumping around? Or are you becoming more like a master of your mind? Are you becoming more in control of what you choose to focus on? Where you are placing your attention? What you're focusing on most of the time? What you allow yourself to perceive? Because everything you allow yourself to perceive affects your mind. What you perceive constantly or what you are perceiving constantly is filling your subconscious mind and suddenly your environment designs program into your subconscious mind that become like uh, a part of your personality. So you see, we have a lot in our hands when it comes to changes, when it comes to transformation, but it all comes to becoming a better listeners of ourselves. So you see, a month of February is offering you a beautiful opportunity, opportunity to in tune with yourself and be your best friend, be a partner of yourself. You know, often we are depending on our partner or on our friends or on our family members, which is all great. We are social beings. But you also need to depend on yourself. That's where you discover the greatest source of confidence, of courage, of trust, of love. You need to have that reverence for yourself, for your soul, right? So you can experience awe for life. Because life is, um, it can be so beautiful. Once we tap into that state of awe, everything can awaken that sense of curiosity. Oh, what a beautiful weather it is today. And we go outside and we explore a little bit and suddenly we feel much brighter and suddenly our cup becomes filled with uh, a lot of joy and suddenly we have something to share. And then there are days when we don't have anything to share, when we feel like today I just want to stay at home, today I just want to be with myself and it's also okay, we need to accept that. 
right? So you need to learn to be gentle with yourself. And to be gentle with yourself doesn't mean that you stop everything, like you stop working out, you stop doing anything that's important to you. It doesn't mean that. It just means that you listen to yourself, like you go and do a workout, but you listen. Does it feel right? Does it, you know, is it okay? Is it, um, should you be today um, focusing more on stretching and less on the strength or whatever, right? We just listen ourselves more deeply because there are days where everything just feels natural, right? We are driven, we are focused, everything works great. But then there are those February days where <clears throat> we are truly a bit slower, a bit more present, a bit more careful with everything, a bit more emotional. And it's all okay. Those are seasons and rhythms of nature and that's what we need to appreciate. So my friends, everything is work working in your favor. Everything is manifesting for you. But you need to know that uh, the greatest transition happens once you know a bit more of your dark side of yourself, the shadow side of you, and you accept it. So doesn't matter if it is happening through dreams right now, if you go into meditation and it just happens like you can't calm down your mind, it's not like um, you should control it completely. But recognize the reason why you can't um, let go of it. Because just yesterday I had that kind of a meditation where I just couldn't calm down my mind. So I started asking myself like uh, why it's happening to me. And I've noticed I need to write something important now. And I've st when I've started journaling, some really incredible concepts uh, that were kind of boggling me for some time now came out so clearly that I've noticed, well, my mind is actually seeking attention. I need to write down. So journaling is a powerful practice for this time to recognize more of what's happening in your mind. Journaling is a practice of, of um, cleansing your mind where you open the doorway of your mind and you write down the thoughts of what's happening beneath the surface of your conscious thoughts. It's something really important and often we ignore that because we are so busy with our daily lives. But, but that's how we become sharper. We become more um, connected with ourselves, more grounded and more in tune with all that complex system of mind, body, soul, higher self, spirit, you know, it's a complex system. And as we're ascending on that level of awareness, we need to recognize not so much into what kind of beings we are evolving to, but rather what is pulling us down so we can release, heal and let go of what's not serving us. And we need to recognize all aspects of ourselves, also our environment. What in my environment could I let go of? It's just not sparking a joy or I just don't need that thing anymore. It's a good time to check up your environment. That's something I was talking in the previous video. Check up your environment and see if there's something you could sell, like something you don't need. That thing is seeking um, to go to someone who need that thing. You need to know that. Sometimes we feel that with books. Sometimes we feel that with uh, plants, flowers, things, gadgets. Like we don't need a certain thing anymore. We could sell it or we could give it away. You know, um, today I wrote something down uh, like check your environment and remove, sell or give away what doesn't resonate with you anymore. Because when things are not aligned with us anymore, they may be seeking a new owner who needs them. Everything has a soul to an open-hearted person, right? Everything has a soul to an open-hearted person, which means that everything is alive. And when you feel that you don't need something anymore, it's kind of cluttering your environment. And... It's a good time to see a little bit what could you give away, what could you sell or just remove from your place 
you will see after that you will feel much lighter and that's how you will prepare for the next season of blooming right after that it's a great time to plant some seeds of intentions and prepare for everything that's about to come so many beautiful synchronicities are waiting you in the future so my friends this is it for today i'm sending you lots of love blessings and power have a beautiful day and till next time one love Thank you.